Inkscape's a vector drawing package very similar to Adobe Illustrator and Coral Draw. Inkscape is free, open source software. This tutorial will introduce the basics of drawing and editing lines and polygons before looking at how to draw commonly used archaeological symbols and then showing you how to produce a finished drawing from a field sketch. So I've opened Inkscape and the default new document is an A4 template. You can change this by going to File, Document Properties. You can draw anywhere on the screen, but if you want to print out the drawing, make sure that it's in this area here. I'm going to introduce some of the options on the menu bar on the left hand side. First of all, we have the Select and Transform tool then edit paths by nodes. There is the zoom in and out tool which is straightforward and easy to understand. Then we have create rectangles and squares, create circles, ellipses and arcs and here the main tool that we'll use for drawing is the draw bezier curves and straight lines. And below that we also have the create text tool. So let's start with something basic. Just left click on the create rectangles and squares, move across to the drawing area, left click to start the shape off and then just move across to draw the shape. This is a large black square that we've created. The square consists of a line defining the outside and a fill in between. Over here I've got the fill and stroke dialog box open. If you want this menu open just go up to object and click fill and stroke and it will come up. And here we have three tabs, one for the stroke style, one for the stroke paint which is basically its colour and one for fill. Now if I turn off the fill you see there's the basic square. If I go to the stroke tab I can change the size of that line so if I change it to four point you get a thicker line. If we draw a different kind of shape, a less formal shape using the draw bezier curves and straight lines, let's say an object like this, again we can go in and we can change the width of the line. We can put some fill in there as well and if we don't like the colour we can choose another colour for the fill. Now changing colour you can either do it here or down along the bottom here. And if you right click, you can do things like swap the colour between fill and stroke, for example. If you want to edit this object and change its shape, I'll use the Edit Paths by Nodes. And you can see that we can pull individual points around to make the shape that we want. Another thing we can do is to change the transparency of the fill. Moving objects around the screen is just as simple as selecting, holding the left mouse button down and moving them around. OK, now on to the circle tool. We're able to draw a circle or ellipse and if we want to check that it is circular when you've got something selected, the boxes up here will show you the properties of the object. And here we see we've got a height of just over 85 millimeters and a width of 82 millimeters. So I'm going to change them both to 85 to give us a perfect circle. Now sometimes this can take a, a few tries to actually get it to take correctly. Now there we are, we have a perfect circle. Now onto the text tool. Click on the text icon, click where you want the text and now you can just start typing. And if you want to edit the text you need to go to text, text and font. This menu here is where you can change the font. You can change the size of the letters and on this second tab is where you can change the text itself. Uh, so something like this. That's the basic introduction into using the tools that we're now going to use to create some commonly used archaeological symbols.
we're going to start with a, a scale bar and north arrow, things that you should always have on your drawings. These are ready prepared examples and I have a file that has these already drawn in them so I can just cut and paste them rather than drawing them from scratch each time. I'll take the scale bar first and I'll take it apart and then show you how to build it. So object ungroup and I'll come back to this command later on and you can see that we have three sets of numbers we have one two three four five blocks and two short lines now because this is a scale drawing these blocks have to be a certain size and you can calculate the size for each individual scale all I'm going to do is look how big the existing boxes are and I'm going to create a shape that's the same size that box is 10 millimeters by 2.5 millimeters. This one's smaller, so I'll change the size to 10 and get its width right. And change the height to 2.5. Now only three of the boxes have no fill, and we have two boxes that are black. And I'm going to use a command called duplicate, which is under edit and it creates a copy of an object on top of itself which you can then move to a new position. I'm just going to repeat this until I've got enough. You can also access the duplicate command by right clicking once you have a square selected. Okay, so this one and this one need a solid black fill. So select it then turn on the fill and we need to turn that black and then we do the same for the next one. Next, select all of that and use Object Group. And that means that when I select the scale bar, it will move as all one unit rather than as individual parts. Now we now have the, uh, the two short lines to add. I'm not going to bother redrawing them, I'm just going to drag them down to where I want them. So there is the scale bar without any numbers. We then go to the text tool and we need a zero. And that's bigger than the zero that was previously there. So I want to change that down to 12 point and see how it looks. And then we have 10 meters and we'll change that down to 12 point and move it across to here. And the final one we need to do is to show the scale of 1 to 200. And again, I'll make that 12 point. I now select it all and use object group so that it all stays together. The north arrow is fairly simple, it's literally one straight vertical line. Which on the stroke style tab here you can add an arrowhead. It's not exactly the same as the example, but it's very similar. Next we need a bar that crosses the line. If I zoom in you'll see something useful here. These grabs have now appeared and they'll show you the very centre of that line. I can move it until it's placed perfectly centrally. Now 
Now we need an N at the end for North using the text tool. I'm going to make these two lines a bit fatter. And now object group so that it's all held together. And of course what you can do is develop your own style of North Arrow and Scale Bar and if you have them readily prepared on a different drawing you can just cut and paste them when you need them and that will help you to produce consistently similar drawing style. The hash is a symbol that you'll find on most archaeological maps and plans. It's how archaeologists show slopes. Instead of using contours we use hashes and hashes are basically an arrow that at the fat end defines where the top of a slope is and the pointed end shows you where the bottom of the slope is and they're very very easy to draw. They're simply a long narrow triangle like that. Now if we zoom in I can change the shape of that using the edit nodes. I can also rotate it using select. You don't usually use a hasher on its own, it will be part of a group of hashes showing some sort of an earthwork feature. So using the edit duplicate command I can put another one in place and another one. And in fact if you select a group of them like that and duplicate you can end up with a, another three. Now all you need to do is to space them out how you want them rotate them to whatever orientation they need to be and each one will probably need editing to a different length and here you can see how these hashes define a curved slope and here the spacing of hashes changes from fairly wide spacing at this end to fairly tight spacing at this end and this shows how the slope is getting steeper. I'm now going to run through how to draw a few of the other symbols that you might use on a map. So starting with this one up here, a rock outcrop. This is really easy to do. It's basically a series of lines set up to show the jagged edge of a rock outcrop. And you can make that as jagged or as smooth as you want to. It doesn't need any fill so I'll just take that fill off and this shape you can then scale it up or down. Next a stream or river and a path, both are very similar to draw. You start with a line like that and you may want to change the stroke style. I've gone up to six but uh, I think that I should go up to 10 point. I'm going to uh, use the duplicate command again but this time in a different way. So I now have two versions of the same line and what I'm going to do is make one 8 point and change the colour And there you are, you have a river. Now if I want to make that into a path, I have to zoom in and try to select the wider line, which is not always easy, and change it to a dashed line. I can now slide the two versions back together again.
OK, what about a ditch? Well, a ditch is really easy. It's just like the hashes that we used earlier, but smaller. And you can see that each of the hashes is a small triangle. The stroke width is 0.25 point. So all you do is copy and paste them next to each other. If you've got both lines pointing inward, then they're defining a ditch. If you have them pointing outward, then you're defining a bank. You can also use hashes to define pits, mounds and shafts. You may also want to use a symbol to define the texture of material, such as piles of stone, and these are quite easy to do as well. This is simply a whole lot of different shapes that are different scales. And the quickest way to draw these is just to produce one shape that's more or less what you want. I'll then change this over to a much smaller line with a solid fill. You can take a shape like that and you can duplicate, making it smaller and then rotating it. And you've got two shapes that actually look different even though they're not. Again, we can duplicate and then move the nodes to make it a different shape. And I can rotate it a bit. Potentially, you could do the whole of a stone pile from one initial shape. And if I zoom out, you'll see a nice pile of stones there. It's very easy to do and you can then group it so you can move it around as one object. You can then scale it or copy it and change it to whatever size you want. The biggest issue is getting the scale right and making sure that the size of the stones is appropriate for the scale of your drawing. Buildings are quite straightforward and follow very similar conventions to the Auden survey maps. If the building doesn't have a roof then it's shown with the walls as a solid black line and you can mark on any windows and door openings. If the building does have a roof, as you can see you just show the outline and then you show the basic detail of the roof. So that's another little set of symbols which now gives you enough symbols to create your own map. In this part of the tutorial I'll take a field sketch and convert it into a finished scale drawing. I've opened Inkscape and I'm using an A4 landscape page template. I've already scanned a drawing and have saved it at a resolution of 90 dpi. Due to a quirk of Inkscape, if saved at any other resolution it won't be imported at the correct scale. And when you add an image to Inkscape, there are two choices to either embed the image or to link to the image. By embedding it, you take a copy of the image and it becomes part of the Inkscape drawing. So if you move the drawing on your computer, all of its component parts will be there. And it will be the same if you shared it with someone else. All the elements of the drawing will stay the same. Now, it does produce a larger file size, but I don't consider that that's a great problem and embedding is the option that I would choose. OK, the drawing's opened and I'm going to use the select tool here to move it across like so. Next, we need to set up some layers in the document, so go to layers and layers. And this will bring up the dialog box here. We've already got one layer, that's the one that has our field drawing in, and you can turn that layer on or off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that layer and call it Field Sketch, and then lock it. Then I'll create another layer above it, which I'll call Drawing. Because we've locked the first layer, we can't actually draw on top of it or accidentally move it, we'll stay where it is. So now I'll begin drawing in the drawing area. We're going to use the Select and Transform tool here. We'll also use the Edit Paths by Node tool below it. And lines will be drawn with the Draw Bezier Curves and Straight Lines tool. We can use this tool to start drawing hashes. And these are very simple to draw, basically just long, narrow triangles.
select and transform lets you do a number of things first time you click it you get these grabs up which let you move something sideways or up and down or if you take the corner grabs you scale something uniformly it's also a tool that you use to move things around the screen below that we have the edit paths by node and if you select there you can see that each of the points of the hasher has a selection node on it and you can move each one individually and this is a really useful tool when you're editing shapes as I'll show you in a moment so there's the first hasher and I've put it in place there now what I want to do is use the edit duplicate command to create another one and what that does is create a copy of the object selected above it and you can just move this off somewhere else now with this second hasher uh, I'm going to rotate it to start with to fit the pencil drawing underneath and then I'm going to make it a little shorter like so if you want to see how that's going to look on the finished drawing you can turn off the first layer and it's always useful to turn that layer on and off while you're drawing just to keep a check on how well the drawing is working so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue to put these hashes in until I have the whole drawing completed the drawing is now complete and I'll turn off the field sketch so you can see how it looks There are a couple of things missing, there's no scale bar on North Arrow. I do have already set up in another file examples of scale bars and North Arrows and what I can just do is to copy and paste those into the drawing. As I've said previously, having ready made scale bars and North Arrows is really useful and it's a way to make sure that your drawings have a standardised look to them. I'm just going to turn the original drawing on for a second to demonstrate that the drawing is correctly scaled and you can see that the scale bar fits pretty well I'm now going to move the scale bar up into this corner of the drawing and then I need to take the north arrow and orientate it correctly So just using the select and transform tool, second click on it and you can rotate it to the correct orientation. Turn that layer off and I think I'll move the north arrow up there. Now additional things you should add to this drawing are a title block in the corner detailing what the drawing represents, where is it, when was it surveyed, who surveyed it, who drew it, etc. But that's all fairly easy to add on later. But for now I'm just going to leave this drawing like that. <laughs> 